if you are new to the channel then subscribe the channel and press the bell icon for further notification okay student welcome you all to this new lecture in gate power system series so today again we will be solving five questions starting from question number 121 122 23 24 and then to question number 125 okay then let's try to solve these questions so in question number 121 three phase to ground fault takes place at locations f1 and f2 in the system shown in the figure if the fault takes place at location f1 then the voltage and the current at bus f is equal to bf1 and if1 these are corresponding to fault f1 if there is a fault in f1 and if there is a fault in f2 then vf2 and if2 are the corresponding voltage and current from this bus a the correct statement about about the voltage and current during the fault f1 and f2 now if there is a fault in f2 you can see if the power was initially flowing from this to this it, because it was angle having higher angle so you can assume that power was flowing in this direction so okay if now the v is this it is the normal direction so the your if1 you can see you will find from this voltage to this ground you will find a reactance in between them so therefore the current will lack this voltage so the, it is this normal direction also power was flowing in this direction so v and i angle was less than 90 so because the angle was less than 90 and uh, now i will be also lagging because of this fault reactance from the twin to this to this so here you can easily say if there is a fault in f2 then current will be flowing in this direction so it is your if1 will be lagging vf1 that means fault f2 sorry vf2 will be leading if2 so vf2 leads if2 that is option a or option c okay now you come to this one this side now if there is a fault now current will come from this side now from how fault this current will be feed some currents will come from here some currents will come from here so this current will go to its reverse direction normally current was flowing in this direction so it will go so the power flow becomes in reverse when the power flow becomes reverse when your angle becomes 90 uh, above 90 the voltage angle and between uh, current angle suppose this was my voltage of that bus so initially the pa power was flowing in this like this now because power flow has been reversed so your i will be something like this this will be your if1 and this is suppose your bf1 this was the initial case normally i1 was something like that power was flowing in this direction now power flow in reverse direction now you see which one is leading now if1 will lead so bf1 will lag that means option c this is for the f1 and for the f2 case suppose this was the original case this was your i2 normally now the i2 will be something of this fashion if2 because in the same direction only power flow will be because the angle for power flow in the same direction the angle should be less than 90 if you want to reverse the power flow then i should reverse this direction then the power flow will reverse it will come back side because then now the angle is like greater than 90 so vi sin phi vi cos theta if you do angle is greater than 90 it will give you negative power a two bus system and corresponding zero sequence network is shown in the figure so i have explained already how to draw this zero sequence the transformer t1 and t2 so for this transformer this side is connected so obviously this is star grounded this side so this would be star grounded that means this 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 not this one out of these two this and this because this ot t1 primary should be star grounded because this is grounded and this one is not connected this is so no delta will be there t1 no delta t1 no delta t1 no delta so this is gone so obviously this one is answered so you can see also this is star grounded that's why connected this is not star it is not connected you come to t2 obviously again this is connected because of t2 this side is connected to star ground or this is your ot2 so this side is connected star ground and uh, obviously this is connected that means secondary is delta so that means option b i have explained it so many times earlier also drawing the switches here i am not drawing the switch one two three a three phase 100 mba 25 generator has a solidly grounded neutral the positive ne negative and zero sequence reactants all are given the machine based quantities if a bolted fault bolted fault means it is a solid ground that means no ground uh, fault impedance is you can neglect it to zero it is a solid fault it is solidly ground ground fault or it is bolted fault occurs at the terminal of the unloaded generator if the fault current in amperes immediately after the fault that is you have to find the fault current so what is if for a single line to ground for 3 into 1 by that is ia0 and it is x0 that is then x2 x1 x2 then and it is solidly grounded and solidly grounded neutral so no zn so it will be simple 0 0.05 so if you do this one you will get it 6.6 .6 per unit 
but you have to answer it in ampere so you have to multiply it by its base what is its base so it is mba 100 into 10 to the power 6 divided by root 3 into 25 into 10 to the power 3 so if you did do this one it will be you will get around 15393 or 394 around this that depends how much you are root 3 taking 1.732 or you are taking exactly so the answer will be near about like this 124 determine the correctness of or otherwise the following okay assertion and reasoning okay first assertion this is the statement this is the reason for it first decoupled load flow fdlf method gives approximate load flow solution because it uses several assumption okay this one we know because first assumption is it decouples your jacobian from newton epsilon p and theta coupling and q and v coupling and all other components p v so this was your jacobians in newton epsilon this is your jacobian you can remember p theta p v q theta and q v so these are neglected in jacobians so the relation between p and theta and q and v that has been decoupled and then we assume that for y dash y double dash calculations we neglect all these things which doesn't affect theta we neglect all these things which doesn't affect that much on Bell's magnitude so we do lots of approximation so that's why its correctness is approximate that's why it is approximate that, that is correct a is correct now two accuracy depend on the power mismatch vector tolerance we generally calculate the accuracy or depending upon the delta p on based on that we say whether it is accurate or not successive two iterations the gap should be very much less that is okay but that is not the reason for its approximate solution actual reason is because we are neglecting lots of things that is the thing because because we are seeing accuracy on based on this power mismatch delta p delta q due to which there is no error by using that we are completing it we are find getting a solution but that is not the reason for approximate solution approximate solution reason is from the very beginning of the problem from the very beginning of the formulation of fdlf you have assumed lots of things and you start this calculation at the final you stop it by using this due to the stopping criteria there is no approximation so reason is not the proper one for this one so you can see the statement is correct but it is not the proper reason so both a and b are true but 2 is not the correct reason for A. That is your option B. Now if you come to 1 to 5, a sustained three phase fault occurred in a power system shown in figure. The current voltage phase during the fault at common reference after the natural transients have died down had been shown. So I am explaining this one fault uh, during fault current what should be phase diagram. I have given a detailed explanation for different faults in a switchgear protection theory. I will give a link. You can check that down. How, what fault when LG occurs or double LG occurs and triple L fault occurs how the phasor diagram changes for three phase but here it is slightly different but you can have a look on that one also that is also very important phasor diagram for during faults here you can see you see the voltage magnitude v1 beta which magnitude is smaller v1 so we know when the fault occurs near to a bus that bus voltage drops because that suddenly gets shorted to ground so that voltage becomes drop reduced compared to your other buses which are at far end so obviously that bus voltage will reduce and the current near to it will get maximum current because the uh, current flowing near that uh, fault current will be very high because uh, in case of fault in a bus in a bus or in, a, in any point that point current becomes high and voltage becomes low so because you can see your v1 is smallest and i1 is highest so it is obviously near v1 and i1 near v1 and i1 this is the near v1 and i1 q and you can see also p also but here one thing also you can see normally if you say your power is flowing in this direction you can see the direction of i1 and i2 so normally power both these was flowing in this direction so for normal reference both should have been same directions i1 and i2 but here you can see if you fault is occurring here i2 is just reverse this way because how now if there is a fault in q how this fault current will flow the current one current will flow this way one current will flow this way and one current will flow in this way from this also there is also another path so three currents will give this fault current from three way the fault currents will come one from this generator one from this generator obviously this generator will be highest because it is giving getting the minimum reactance so it will give the maximum current so this i1 is getting maximum i3 also give rise to some fault current 
I4 also give rise to fault current. So which direction is changed? I4 direction has changed. I2 direction. So you can say I1 and I2. I1 and I2 are reverse direction because I was in same direction, but you can see the I2 direction is changed because I2 is also contributing in the fault with the reverse direction. So that's why I2 and I1 they are at reverse direction, and I1, I3, I4 all are maintaining their original direction. I1 is this, I3 is this, I4 is they are not changing, but I2 is changing from your reference. So that's why I2 is negative. So you can now see that's why Q is the answer. If you like the video, then press the like button and please give your valuable comments in the comment section.